Welcome to the 2024 CDL General Knowledge Practice Test. This test is 60 questions with explained answers to help you prepare for this test. Before we get started, don't forget to jumpstart that like button to keep this channel running. Now here is your CDL instructor to walk you through the questions. Question one, is it advisable to utilize low beams whenever possible? A, true, B, false, C, only in daytime, D, only in residential areas. The correct answer is A, true. Using low beams whenever you can is indeed recommended. Low beams provide adequate illumination while reducing glare for oncoming drivers, contributing to safer nighttime driving and minimizing the risk of blinding other motorists. Question two, what is the recommended braking technique for descending a lengthy steep slope? A, apply brakes continuously to maintain constant speed. B, apply brakes to five MPH below safe speed. Release and repeat. C, apply brakes suddenly to prevent overheating. D, only use engine braking to slow down. The correct answer is B, apply brakes to five MPH below safe speed. Release and repeat. The appropriate technique when descending a long, steep grade is to intermittently apply the brakes to reduce your speed to 5 mph below the safe speed for the descent, then release the brakes. Repeating this process helps prevent brake overheating and maintains control over the vehicle's speed while ensuring safer downhill travel. Question 3. Is it accurate to say that empty trucks have the most effective braking performance? A. True. B. False. C. Sometimes. D. Only on uphill roads. The correct answer is B. False. The statement is false. Empty trucks actually have reduced traction compared to loaded trucks, which can affect braking performance. Loaded trucks often have better traction due to the increased weight over the wheels, leading to improved braking capabilities. Question 4. Which hand signal should be established as the primary communication between you and your helper? A. Wave. B. Stop. C. Thumbs up. D. Pointing. The correct answer is B. Stop. Agreeing on the stop hand signal is crucial to ensure immediate communication between you and your helper. This signal can prevent potential accidents and quickly halt any unsafe actions during maneuvers, contributing to a safer working relationship between the driver and assistant. Question 5. If your speed doubles, how will your stopping distance be affected? A. Stopping distance remains the same. B. Stopping distance increases by half. C. Stopping distance doubles. D. Stopping distance increases by four times. The correct answer is D. Stopping distance increases by four times. If you double your speed, your stopping distance will not simply double but will increase by a factor of four. This is due to the relationship between speed and kinetic energy, which affects the distance required to bring the vehicle to a complete stop. Question 6. What is the primary purpose of having an assistant when backing a vehicle? A. To make the process faster. B. To provide entertainment for the driver. C. To take over the driving temporarily. D. To help avoid blind spots? The correct answer is D. To help avoid blind spots. Using a helper when backing is crucial to help avoid blind spots that might not be visible from the driver's seat. The assistant can provide additional viewpoints and guide the driver to prevent collisions and ensure safer and more accurate backing maneuvers. Question 7. What action is recommended before driving if you are feeling drowsy? A change your clothes, B, exercise, C, consume a heavy meal, D, listen to loud music. The correct answer is B, exercise. If you are drowsy before driving, it's advisable to engage in some form of physical activity or exercise. This can help increase alertness and reduce fatigue, improving your readiness to operate a vehicle safely. Question eight. Which three types of emergency equipment are recommended to have on board? A. Fire extinguisher, spare electrical fuses, warning device. B. 
sunglasses, GPS device, phone charger, C, snacks, water bottles, travel guide, D, blanket, umbrella, first aid kit. The correct answer is A, fire extinguisher, spare electrical fuses, warning device. It's crucial to carry a fire extinguisher, spare electrical fuses, and a warning device as part of your emergency equipment. These items help ensure your preparedness to handle potential emergencies, such as fires, electrical issues, and roadside breakdowns, contributing to your safety and that of others on the road. Question 9. What is the least number of tie-downs required for securing any flatbed load? A. 1. B. 2. C. 4. D. 3. The correct answer is B. 2. To ensure proper load stability and safety, a minimum of two tie-downs is necessary for securing any type of flatbed load. This helps prevent shifting or movement during transportation. Question 10. How can you effectively observe the sides and rear of your vehicle? A. Use your mirrors. B. Roll down the windows. C. Adjust your seat height. D. Activate the hazard lights. The correct answer is A. Use your mirrors. Utilizing your mirrors is a critical method to maintain awareness of the sides and rear of your vehicle. Regular mirror checks enable you to monitor surrounding traffic, make safe lane changes, and be aware of potential hazards or approaching vehicles. Question 11. What is the purpose of devising emergency plans upon identifying a hazard? A. To impress passengers with your driving skills. B. To demonstrate your knowledge of road safety. C. To alert other drivers to the hazard. D. To ensure you have more time to act. The correct answer is D. To ensure you have more time to act. Creating emergency plans when a hazard is detected allows you to anticipate potential actions, enabling you to react promptly and effectively to the situation. This proactive approach provides you with more time to take appropriate measures, enhancing your ability to avoid accidents and ensure safety. Question 12. What is one fundamental purpose of placing a cover over cargo on an open road? A. Enhance vehicle aesthetics. B. Reduce road noise. C. Protect the cargo from weather. D. Improve fuel efficiency. The correct answer is C. Protect the cargo from weather. One primary reason for covering cargo on an open road is to shield it from various weather conditions, ensuring that the load remains intact and undamaged during transportation. Question 13. What is the purpose of inspecting wheel bearing seals and what condition should they be checked for? A. Leaking. B. Rust formation. C. Color changes. D. Scratches. The correct answer is A. Leaking. Wheel bearing seals should be checked for leaking. Leaking seals can lead to contamination of the wheel bearings, potentially causing premature wear and failure of the bearings, which can compromise the vehicle's safety and performance. Question 14. Is it advisable to approach the fire as closely as you can when using an extinguisher? A. Yes. B. No. C. Only if the fire is small. D. Only if you have protective gear. The correct answer is B. No. No, you should not get as close as possible to the fire when using an extinguisher. Maintaining a safe distance is crucial to avoid putting yourself in harm's way and to effectively control the fire from a secure position. Question 15. What elements influence your decision in choosing a safe speed while descending a lengthy steep slope? A. Weight of vehicle, length of grade, steepness, road conditions, weather. B. Vehicle's model, year, fuel type, tire brand, window tint, GPS device. C. Time of day, number of rest stops, passenger conversations, radio station. D. Billboard advertisements, road signs, personal mood, recent maintenance, cabin temperature. The correct answer is A weight of vehicle, length of grade, steepness, road conditions, 
Weather. The selection of a safe speed during a downhill descent is determined by factors such as the weight of the vehicle, the length and steepness of the grade, road conditions, and prevailing weather. These considerations collectively guide the driver to maintain control and ensure safety while navigating the descent. Question 16. What is the purpose of bridge formulas? A. Determine the maximum speed limit on bridges. B. Permit less maximum axle weight for axles that are closer together. C. Estimate the average lifespan of a bridge. D. Calculate the toll fees for bridge crossings. The correct answer is B. Permit less maximum axle weight for axles that are closer together. Bridge formulas are established to ensure that vehicles with axles that are closer together are subject to lower maximum axle weight limits. This helps distribute the weight more evenly and prevents excessive strain on bridges, promoting their structural integrity and safety. Question 17. What is the recommended number of reflective triangles that you should have in your vehicle? A. 3. B. 2. C. 1. D. 4. The correct answer is A. 3. It is advised to carry at least three reflective triangles in your vehicle. These triangles serve as warning devices and should be placed behind your vehicle in the event of a breakdown or emergency, helping to alert other drivers and promote safety on the road. Question 18. What is the rationale behind being in the appropriate gear before beginning a descent? A. You may not be able to shift back into any gear and all braking effect will be lost. B. To reduce engine noise. C. To save wear on the clutch. D. To achieve maximum fuel efficiency. The correct answer is A. You may not be able to shift back into any gear and all braking effect will be lost. Being in the proper gear before starting a downhill descent is crucial to ensure that you can control your speed effectively and maintain braking power. If you are not in the right gear, you risk losing the ability to downshift and potentially lose all braking effect, which can lead to dangerous situations. Question 19. What benefit is associated with choosing to maneuver around an obstacle by going to the right rather than the left? A. It's a shorter route. B. You will avoid drivers passing on the left. C. You can use your dominant hand for steering. D. It's the conventional way to maneuver around obstacles. The correct answer is B. You will avoid drivers passing on the left. Opting to go to the right around an obstacle provides the advantage of avoiding potential collisions with drivers who might be passing on the left. This reduces the risk of a dangerous situation and promotes safer maneuvering. Question 20. What is the minimal requirement for the number of tie-downs for a 20-foot load? A. At least one tie-down for every 10 feet. B. Four tie-downs. C. Two tie-downs. D. Only one tie-down. The correct answer is A. At least one tie-down for every 10 feet. For a 20-foot load, a minimum of two tie-downs is required, as per the standard of having at least one tie-down for every 10 feet of the cargo length. This helps ensure proper load securement and safe transportation. Question 21. Is it accurate to state that coming to a stop is not always the safest course of action in an emergency? A. True. B. False. C. Occasionally. D. Only in inclement weather. The correct answer is A. True. Yes, it is true that stopping may not always be the safest option in an emergency situation. Depending on the circumstances, such as the speed of the vehicle behind you or the nature of the hazard, other actions like swerving or accelerating may be more appropriate to avoid a potential collision. Question 22. In the context of safe driving, what is the definition of communicating? A. Talking to passengers. B. Signaling your intentions. C. Using a hands-free device. D. Changing radio stations frequently. The correct answer is B. Signaling your intentions. Communicating in safe driving 
refers to the practice of signaling your intentions to other drivers and road users. This includes using indicators, brake lights, and other signals to inform those around you about your planned actions, promoting safer interactions, and reducing the likelihood of collisions. Question 23. In what specific situations should you consider downshifting? A. Before starting down a hill and before entering a curve. B. In heavy traffic. C. On a straight road. D. While merging onto a highway. The correct answer is A. Before starting down a hill and before entering a curve. Downshifting is advisable before descending a hill to utilize engine braking and control speed as well as before entering a curve to maintain better control over the vehicle's traction and balance, ensuring safe navigation through these special conditions. Question 24. When stationary on an incline, what technique can prevent your vehicle from rolling backward when starting to move? A. Apply the parking brake firmly. B. Turn the steering wheel to the side. C. Partly engage clutch before taking your foot off the brake. D. Shift into neutral and coast downhill. The correct answer is C. Partly engage clutch before taking your foot off the brake. To prevent your vehicle from rolling back on a hill, it's important to partly engage the clutch before releasing the brake pedal. This technique allows you to smoothly transfer power to the wheels while minimizing the risk of rolling backward, providing better control during hill starts. Question 25. What is a recommended practice when driving down a lengthy downhill slope? A. Use the braking effect of the engine. B. Apply the brakes firmly. C. Increase your speed gradually. D. Engage cruise control. The correct answer is A. Use the braking effect of the engine. When traveling down a long downgrade, it is advisable to use the braking effect of the engine by downshifting to lower gears. This technique helps control your speed without excessive reliance on the brakes, preventing brake overheating and maintaining better vehicle stability. Question 26. In what scenario might adhering to the legal maximum weight not guarantee safety? A. Urban driving. B. Highway cruising. C. Short distance trips. D. Mountain traveling. The correct answer is D. Mountain traveling. Mountain traveling can present steep grades and challenging terrain, which may compromise the safe handling and braking capability of a heavily loaded vehicle, even if it is within legal weight limits. It is essential to consider the specific conditions of the road and environment to ensure safe transportation. Question 27. How would you define the term black ice in driving? A. Thin sheet of clear ice on the roadway. B. Excessive tire wear. C. Dark asphalt on the road. D. Oil spill on the pavement. The correct answer is A. Thin sheet of clear ice on the roadway. Black ice refers to a nearly invisible and thin layer of clear ice that forms on the road surface, often appearing black because it reflects the color of the pavement underneath. It is hazardous because it is difficult to spot and can lead to slippery and dangerous driving conditions. Question 28. What are the potential consequences of wet brakes? A. Improved stopping distance. B. Enhanced visibility. C. Reduced fuel consumption. D. Lack of braking power. The correct answer is D. Lack of braking power. Wet brakes can lead to a lack of braking power due to reduced friction between the brake components and the wet surface. This can result in longer stopping distances and compromised overall braking performance, posing a safety concern. Question 29. What are the primary factors you should focus on when observing the road ahead? A. Weather forecast. GPS directions. B. Traffic and road conditions. C. Local attractions. Billboard advertisements. D. Vehicle interior, rear view mirror. The correct answer is B, traffic and road conditions. While driving, it's essential to pay attention to both traffic patterns and the condition of the road ahead. 
Monitoring these factors helps you anticipate potential obstacles, adjust your driving speed, and make safe decisions on the road. Question 30. When parked on a divided highway, where is the correct placement for your reflectors? A. 10 feet, 100 feet, and 100 feet. B. 5 feet, 50 feet, and 50 feet. C. 15 feet, 150 feet, and 150 feet. D. 20 feet, 200 feet, and 200 feet. The correct answer is A, 10 feet, 100 feet, and 100 feet. Reflectors should be placed at a distance of 10 feet, 100 feet, and 100 feet behind your vehicle when stopped on a divided highway. This arrangement helps alert other drivers to your presence and provides ample warning to approaching traffic, enhancing safety. Question 31. What are some components you should inspect at the front of your vehicle during a walk-around inspection? A. Cup holders, radio controls. B. Signal and clearance lights, headlights. C. Windshield wipers, air conditioning vents. D. Seat adjustment levers, rear view mirror tilt. The correct answer is B. Signal and clearance lights, headlights. During a walk-around inspection, it's important to check the signal and clearance lights, as well as the headlights on the front of your vehicle. These components are crucial for visibility and communication with other drivers, ensuring safe operation on the road. Question 32. What does the term hydroplaning refer to in driving? A. Vehicle overheating on a hot day. B. Strong wind pushing the vehicle off course. C. A sudden increase in engine power. D. Tires losing contact with the road and having no traction. The correct answer is D. Tires losing contact with the road and having no traction. Hydroplaning occurs when water accumulates on the road surface, causing a loss of traction between the tires and the road. This lack of contact can result in reduced control and handling, increasing the risk of accidents. Question 33. Identify essential components of a vehicle's steering system. A. Rear view mirror, horn, seat belt. B. Air conditioning, radio, headlights. C. Cup holder, glove compartment, windshield wipers. D. Spindle, tie rod, drag link. The correct answer is D. Spindle, tie rod, drag link. The spindle, tie rod, and drag link are critical components of a vehicle's steering system that work together to ensure controlled and precise steering. These parts play a crucial role in maintaining safe and effective control over the vehicle's direction and movement. Question 34. Should you release air from overheated tires to restore normal pressure? A. True. B. False. C. Sometimes. D. Only during winter months. The correct answer is B. False. Releasing air from hot tires to lower pressure is not recommended. As tires heat up during driving, their pressure naturally increases, and releasing air can lead to underinflation, affecting vehicle stability, fuel efficiency, and tire wear. Question 35. How can you determine the appropriate time to shift gears? A. Vehicle weight, outside temperature. B. Tire pressure, radio volume. C. Engine speed, road speed. D. Wind direction fuel level. The correct answer is C. Engine speed, road speed. Shifting gears can be determined based on engine speed, RPM, and road speed, vehicle velocity. Monitoring these factors helps ensure smooth gear changes and optimal engine performance while driving. Question 36. How would you define an escape ramp? A. A special lane for overtaking slower vehicles. B a rest area with picnic tables and facilities. C, an exit at the bottom of a hill to slow you down and stop. D, a lane dedicated to emergency vehicles. The correct answer is C, an exit at the bottom of a hill to slow you down and stop. An escape ramp is a designated exit located at the bottom of a hill, designed to provide a safe area for vehicles to slow down and come to a complete stop in case their brakes fail while descending the hill. This is an essential safety feature on steep grades to prevent accidents and mitigate the risks of brake failure. 
Question 37. For which types of fires is a BC extinguisher suitable? A. Paper. Wood. B. Oil. Grease. C. Electrical. Fuel. D. Metal. Glass. The correct answer is C. Electrical. Fuel. A BC extinguisher is effective for extinguishing both electrical fires, such as those involving electrical equipment, and fuel fires, which may include gasoline, oil, or flammable liquids. This type of extinguisher is versatile for addressing a range of fire hazards. Question 38. What is a factor that can lead to vehicle fires? A. Flammable cargo. B. New tires. C. Clean windshield. D. Fresh engine oil. The correct answer is A. Flammable cargo. Flammable cargo, such as hazardous materials or combustible substances, can contribute to vehicle fires if not properly secured or handled. Ensuring proper storage and adherence to safety regulations is essential to prevent the risk of fire incidents. Question 39. What is the primary motivation for performing a vehicle inspection? A. Safety is the most important reason to inspect your vehicle. B. To impress your passengers. C. To enhance fuel efficiency. D. To save time on your journey. The correct answer is A. Safety is the most important reason to inspect your vehicle. Safety is the most vital reason for conducting a vehicle inspection. By thoroughly inspecting your vehicle, you can identify and address potential issues, ensuring that your vehicle is safe to operate on the road. This practice helps prevent accidents, ensuring the well-being of both the driver and others sharing the road. Question 40. During a trip, what actions should you take to monitor your vehicle's condition? A. Admire the scenery. B. Listen to your favorite music. C. Watch gauges for signs of trouble. D. Text or make phone calls. The correct answer is C. Watch gauges for signs of trouble. While on a trip, it's important to stay vigilant about your vehicle's well-being. Monitoring gauges for signs of trouble allows you to detect any abnormalities early, helping to prevent potential mechanical issues and ensuring a safe journey. Question 41. What is a measure you can take at an accident scene to avert another potential collision? A. Put out flares. B. Collect personal information from witnesses. C. Offer medical assistance. D. Take photographs for insurance purposes. The correct answer is A. Put out flares. Placing flares at an accident scene helps warn other drivers of the potential hazard, reducing the risk of additional accidents by providing advance notice and improving visibility of the situation ahead. Question 42. What are two factors that can lead to tire fires? A. Excessive tire tread depth and frequent rotation. B. Underinflated tires and duels that touch. C. Cold weather conditions and worn out brake pads. D. Clean road surfaces and proper tire alignment. The correct answer is B. Underinflated tires and duels that touch. Tire fires can be caused by underinflated tires, which generate excessive heat due to increased friction, and by dual tires that touch each other resulting in friction and heat buildup that may ignite a fire. These conditions highlight the importance of proper tire maintenance and ensuring adequate spacing between dual tires. Question 43. What is the designated minimum tread depth requirement for the remaining tires on a vehicle? A. 1 16 inch B. 2 32 inch C. 1 4 inch D. 1 8 inch The correct answer is B. 2 32 inch the minimum tread depth for all tires except the front tires should be 232 inch. Adequate tread depth is essential for maintaining traction and handling, helping to prevent hydroplaning and improving overall road grip, which contributes to safer driving conditions. Question 44. How would you define a hazard? A. A convenient parking spot. B. A scenic view. C. Any road condition or user that is a possible danger. D. An opportunity for a detour? The correct answer is C. Any road condition or user that is a possible danger. A hazard refers to any road condition or user 
such as pedestrians, other vehicles, or obstacles that poses a potential danger to safe driving. Recognizing and responding to hazards is essential for proactive and defensive driving to prevent accidents. Question 45. What is the main advantage of backing toward the driver's side? A. It's easier to steer. B. Because you can see better. C. It's a faster maneuver. D. It conserves fuel. The correct answer is B. Because you can see better. Choosing to back toward the driver's side is recommended because you can see better during the maneuver. This enhanced visibility helps you have a clearer view of potential obstacles, making the backing process safer and more controlled. Question 46. At what specific point should you initiate a downshift with an automatic transmission? A. Before starting downgrade. B. When approaching a red traffic light. C. While accelerating on a straight road. D. After exiting a highway ramp. The correct answer is A. Before starting downgrade. Downshifting an automatic transmission is particularly important before starting a descent on a downgrade. This practice allows you to utilize engine braking and maintain better control over your vehicle's speed while going downhill, enhancing overall safety. Question 47. What are the components that contribute to the overall stopping distance of a vehicle? A. Vehicle weight, tire tread, depth, engine power. B. Road surface, tire pressure, vehicle color. C. Perception distance, reaction distance, braking distance. D. Wind speed, temperature, humidity. The correct answer is C. Perception distance, reaction distance, braking distance. The total stopping distance of a vehicle is composed of three factors, perception distance, the distance traveled while recognizing a need to stop, reaction distance, the distance covered while reacting and moving your foot from the accelerator to the brake, and braking distance, the distance covered during the actual braking process. These combined elements determine the distance a vehicle needs to come to a complete stop after a driver perceives the need to stop. Question 48. What is the recommended distance for maintaining forward visual focus while driving? A. 5 to 7 seconds. B. 8 to 10 seconds. C. 18 to 20 seconds. D. 12 to 15 seconds. The correct answer is D. 12 to 15 seconds. To ensure proactive and safe driving, it's advised to look 12 to 15 seconds ahead on the road. This allows you to anticipate potential hazards, make informed decisions, and respond to changing traffic conditions in a timely manner. Question 49. Is it advisable to apply the brakes forcefully when a tire blows out? A. True. B. False. C. Sometimes. D. Only on wet roads. The correct answer is B. False. The statement is false. If a tire blows out, abruptly applying the brakes can lead to loss of control and potentially cause a skid or spin. Instead, it's recommended to gradually reduce speed and maintain control of the vehicle while safely pulling over to the side of the road. Question 50. What is the required minimum tread depth for the front tires of a vehicle? A. 432 inch. B. 14 inch. C. 116 inch. D. 18 inch. The correct answer is A. 432 inch. The minimum tread depth for front tires should be at least 432 inch. Adequate tread depth ensures proper traction and grip on the road particularly during adverse weather conditions, reducing the risk of skidding and enhancing overall safety while driving. Question 51. At what intervals are you required to stop and inspect your cargo while driving? A. Whenever you feel tired. B. Every three hours or 150 miles. C. Once a day. D. Only during adverse weather conditions. The correct answer is B every three hours or 150 miles. To ensure the safety and proper security of your cargo, it is mandatory to stop and inspect it every three hours or after covering a distance of 150 miles. This practice helps identify any potential issues and prevent accidents caused by shifting or improperly secured cargo.
Question 52. Do retarders prevent skidding on slippery roads? True or false? A. True. B. False. C. Sometimes. D. Only at high speeds. The correct answer is B. False. Retarders are not designed to prevent skidding on slippery roads. They primarily assist in slowing down the vehicle by using engine resistance, but additional caution and proper driving techniques are necessary to avoid skidding on slippery surfaces. Question 53. What does gross combination weight, GVW, refer to? A. Weight of power unit plus trailer plus cargo. B. Weight of power unit minus trailer minus cargo. C. Weight of fuel in the vehicle. D. Weight of passengers in the vehicle. The correct answer is A. Weight of power unit plus trailer plus cargo. The gross combination weight, GVW, encompasses the total weight of the power unit, such as the truck, the attached trailer, and all the loaded cargo. This measurement is important for ensuring compliance with weight limits and promoting safe and balanced transportation. Question 54. On which type of vehicles should you avoid using stab braking? A. Vehicles with manual transmissions. B. Vehicles with large cargo loads. C. Vehicles with automatic transmissions. D. Vehicles equipped with anti-lock brakes. The correct answer is D. Vehicles equipped with anti-lock brakes. Stab braking should not be used on vehicles equipped with anti-lock brakes. ABS, as it can interfere with the proper functioning of the ABS system and may lead to reduced braking effectiveness. Question 55. What is a potential consequence of inadequate weight on the front axle? A. Improved steering response. B. Can cause poor traction. C. Enhanced tire longevity. D. Reduced fuel consumption. The correct answer is B can cause poor traction. Insufficient weight on the front axle can lead to poor traction, especially in slippery or adverse road conditions. Adequate weight on the front axle helps maintain control, improve steering grip, and ensure safe driving performance. Question 56. What are three cargo-related responsibilities of drivers? A. Checking tire pressure, cleaning windows, adjusting mirrors. B. Refueling the vehicle, selecting music, adjusting seat position. C. Checking engine oil, washing the exterior, refilling windshield washer fluid. D. Inspection of cargo, balanced weight of cargo, secured cargo. The correct answer is D. Inspection of cargo, balanced weight of cargo, secured cargo. Drivers are responsible for ensuring the inspection of cargo maintaining a balanced weight distribution of the cargo, and properly securing the load. These measures help promote safety, stability, and compliance with regulations during transportation. Question 57. Before transporting a sealed load, what is a crucial action you must take? A. Count the number of items in the load. B. Inspect the interior of the trailer. C. Check that you don't exceed weight restrictions. D. Check for potential leaks in the load. The correct answer is C. Check that you don't exceed weight restrictions. It is essential to ensure that you don't exceed weight restrictions before transporting a sealed load. This helps maintain compliance with regulations and ensures safe and lawful transportation of the cargo. Question 58. What is a potential issue that can arise in a vehicle's suspension system? A. Clean windows. B. Leaking shock absorbers. C. Full fuel tank. D. New tires. The correct answer is B. Leaking shock absorbers. Leaking shock absorbers are a common suspension system defect that can lead to reduced vehicle stability and handling. When shock absorbers leak, they may lose their ability to dampen vibrations and maintain proper tire contact with the road compromising the overall safety and performance of the vehicle. Question 59. Is it safe to remove the radiator cap as long as the engine is not overheated? A. True. B. False. C. 
only in cold weather. D. Only during routine maintenance. The correct answer is B. False. The statement is false. Even if the engine is not overheated, removing the radiator cap can be dangerous due to the pressure buildup in the cooling system. It's important to wait for the engine to cool down before attempting any maintenance involving the radiator cap. Question 60. What does the term pull-up refer to in the context of driving? A. Adjusting your side mirrors. B. Increasing your speed on a highway. C. Repositioning of your vehicle when backing. D. Coming to a complete stop at an intersection. The correct answer is C. Repositioning of your vehicle when backing. A pull-up refers to the action of repositioning your vehicle while backing up. This maneuver can help you improve your angle and visibility, making it easier to successfully complete the backing maneuver and avoid obstacles. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you still need more practice, then check out these videos or click the first link in the description to get your cheat sheet, which will help you pass your CDL exam on your first try.